Okay, my name's Bill Nye. For a couple of years, I've been uh, scripting uh, Poser 3D uh, program to create uh, flash uh, 3D looking animations, little characters that walk around. So before I uh, describe it, let me just give you a little quick example of what, what this is about. Oops, that seems kind of slow. Oh, boy, he's way faster there. Yeah, it'll be slow here. Okay, so that's a little poser character that you can, you can a little character you can bring up in poser and then you can make them walk with their little walk designer. So this is really easy. So there's no real 3D modeling in this. You just pull a character up. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show all that. Oops. Oh, wow. So this is delayed. Okay. Yeah. You should look up there. Okay. So what you do is you, you open up Poser. So Poser pl splash screen. That's all right. <laughs> it's old. It's old. You, I, I can give you the installer. Okay, so you bring up, so in Poser, you don't do any 3D modeling. You just, you just grab one of their models, and you put clothes on it, and you can move them around, and you can make an animation. So it's kind of a simple way to do 3D if you like, if you like their models. But they have a lot of, lot of models. So you take the, you, so you, you pick a character, you go into the walk designer, and the walk designer, you can click this little walk button here, and when he starts walking, then you can move all these little controls and make him walk in some kind of funny way. But that's... That's the best slider bar. So for, for example, so here's, a, here's an example of a, uh, of, of a character walking. Is that, Okay, How he's sexy this character has. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't actually. I don't. How much sex? I don't. Those pants are pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually didn't play around with those controls. <laughs> There, when, when you load the program in, in the installer, there's a question that comes up: Do you want anatomically correct characters? <laughs> That's the only thing. And I don't. I don't. Uh, so for the for the Python code. Mm -hmm. So in the Python code, it's pretty simple. It's a little more complicated than this. I simplified it, but you have to just you know get pointers to things. Get the scene. Get the figure you want in case you have more than one character in the picture. Uh, get the part that you want to rotate, which in, there's, there's a bone hierarchy, and the body is the name of the top of the hierarchy. So if I just rotate, if I just change the rotate parameter on body, the body is going to rotate around. So then I have a little poser script that just makes the character walk 10 frames and then move a little, you know, move 10 degrees and walk 10 frames. So I'm going to make a big animation, which I'll show you next of this character walking. So here's here's the output of that Python script. See? So he's got a, he's got a 10 frame walk cycle and every 10 degrees, which is coincidentally the same, every 10 degrees I, I, I just rotate them about. So by doing that, I can bring that thing into into uh, into Flash and then just pick the right frame and it'll look like 3D. The next bus needs to be then, uh, <laughs> Wow, this is kind of spooled up. Yeah, that's fine. This was like spooling up. Oh, no, it's actually yeah, but how? Oh, here it goes. Okay. So one little thing to to consi consider is you want to. You notice how I use kind of flat colors. I purposely use flat colors because this thing is actually creating. You know, Flash is a is a is a is a vector program. This thing is creating paint for every piece of color in the in the thing that this poser exports. So if you have, you know, these gradients, there's going to be a whole bunch of little pieces of flash objects, you know, there that they're creating, which makes the, the Swift file huge. So that's why on my things, I turn off all light sources, ambient lighting, flat colors, everything as flat as possible. So I get big, giant pieces of flash material, and then it doesn't, you know, it's not a big Swift file. Because I'm going to have a, a, a lot of these characters. So here's an example. So I have a little repulsion game. Uh -oh. Whoa. Uh -oh. what, is, what does that mean? Oh. oh, OK, OK. So there's a bunch of, oh, they're moving pretty, OK. So this is just repelling the mouse. 
Are they repelling? Yeah, they're going. <laughs> now, <laughs> you notice, you notice they, they walk a little faster when they're moving. So that's just a little piece of action script code to pick the right frame. You just I'm picking the frame according to where they're walking and I'm picking the you know I'm picking the block of 10 according to what angle they're walking. So this program is just somebody just walking randomly and then there's kind of another thread which looks at looks at where they're walking and picks the frame to make them make them animate. The guys in the back the guys on the top. What? <laughs> well, I don't pay any attention to the depth part of this. It's, they're just walking anywhere they want. Flat sprites out of Poser. These are just flat sprites on, on the system. This is, yep, right. So let me show you the uh, action script real quick. So the action script for that is just um, some, you know, 36 position, 10 frames each, uh, 10 video frames per walk cycle. This is all arbitrary, you know. And then I have a little fudge factor to I have to adjust to make him stop stop him from moonwalking. So you know you don't, he walks too fast. So you have to you have to, so you have to play around with this fudge factor. And so there's you know they're, they're walk, the characters in that game are just walking randomly. And there's another another enter frame which is kind of like a thread which is just receiving how far they walk. This dx dy compute the angle. Uh, keep the angle positive, and then I compute the base frame, which is which block of 10 I'm going to pick the cycle out of, and then I get the current frame, which is this fudge times how far they walked, and then I take that modulo 10, the number of frames, and and you see there's a go to and stop there. This animation is never actually animating. I'm calculating every single frame and stopping. The, this, it's not animating in the sense of flash, where you make a ball, you know, spin and it keeps spinning. So every single frame you see is being jumped to and stopped, but they look like they're animating because I, you know, some other part of the program keeps the guy, little guys walking around. But if I stopped them, they would just stop in place. So for Maker Faire, I use this for Maker Faire, and I made a little uh, thing. So I made a little uh, exhibit which, uh, which you move a Robo Sapien in the normal way and I have a camera up on top and I track those little red and green balloons I stuck on his hands. And I track him and then I use that coordinate to just move this other robot in this flash game using this little animation, te animation technique. So here's the, here's the uh, you know, so I went and found a robot for free somewhere online. You know, there's poser models somewhere. So, I, you know, there's the little guy rotating. And there was th actually three of those animations in this game. There was a walking, a lifting up a character, and then a walking with a, a, a victim. Well, so, oops. So there was another one. I'll just show you one other one. <laughs> so that's another one that I use. And you know, I'm, all I'm doing is creating a different you know, angle view, so it looks and finally, I th hope the game will play here. Let's see. I mean, you can't play the game without the camera, but I, I have a kind of a debugging mode for the, let's see. Where's the robot? Okay, here it goes. See, so what you're looking at is a debugging thing. The upper left window would normally be the camera seeing those little red and green colors, but I made a little movie, an FLV file, to just move these red and green dots around, and I can use that to debug, you know, the whole system without having to turn the camera on. So. This thing is just walking around, track, tra you know, so the tracking of the red and green is actually working. Everything is working here, including the, this guy walking around. So let me, uh, let me see if I can, uh, I'll show you how the game works. I'm gonna stop him right here by hitting space bar. And when you stop him over a character, he picks him up and now you gotta get him moving again. <laughs> and then you would come over somewhere else and stop and he would, and he would put him down. So anyway, that's how the game worked. It wasn't it wasn't all that much fun because the robot's really hard to control. People could pe people could people could barely make the robot move. The they hardly even were even to see, to see the game. So what, how do they move the robot? Would make they would just move him in the normal way with the controller. My only hardware contribution is putting that red and green balloon over his hands. I don't do anything to the, to the robot. 
Well, it's it's supposed it's supposed to be uh it's it's called a uh, rescue robot. It's supposed to be a robot underneath a pile of rubble where you have to go and I mean that robot would never look like a a, a humanoid robot, but whatever you know. I had a Robo Sapien, and anyway, so that's that's the end of that. Any questions? Okay.